Landing I <laughs> So the plane, it was quickly descending, and I thought we were all going to crash. All I saw outside the window were the treetops of the forest below. The wind was up, and the plane, it was shaking. I was really scared. Dear God, please save me! I mean, you could almost touch the treetops of the old pines. That's how close we were when out of nowhere, a landing strip appeared. It was a miracle! <laughs> not really. The pilot knew what he was doing. I'm just not a very good flyer. In Greek mythology, it was Icarus, the first person to ever fly. He had wings constructed from feathers and wax. And look what happened to him. He flew too close to the sun, and when the wax in his wings melted, he fell into the sea. Oh, what a guy. All throughout history, humankind has always wanted to fly. Fly like the birds. By 500 BC, kite flying was all the rage in China. They even had something called a bamboo dragonfly or Chinese top, consisting of feathers stuck to the end of a stick when rapidly spun between the hands would fly into the night. <laughs> Though be it a toy, we gotta start somewhere. By 200 BC, we've got Chinese sky lanterns. These were small hot air balloons made of paper and strategically used in wars. However, later on, sky lanterns became a popular attraction at Chinese lantern festivals. Okay, let's move forward. Tower jumping. <laughs> During the Middle Ages, you had a lot of guys covering their bodies with vulture feathers, stiffened with wooden struts, jumping off towers, trying to glide safely to the ground. I'm sure it was a sight to behold. All these mangled bodies at the bottom of the tower. <laughs> Man, there's got to be a better way to commit suicide. By the 15th century, Leonardo da Vinci had plans for several flying machines such as the Ornithopter. What a cool name, eh? The Ornithopter. Honey, I'm just going to the store to get a pack of smokes. I'm taking the Ornithopter. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, okay. Da Vinci, well, he knew that humans were too heavy and not strong enough to fly using wings simply attached to their arms. So he sketched a device in which the person lies down on a plank and works two large wings using hand levers and foot pedals and a system of pulleys. Ha! Very cool. As time marched on, the 19th century and into the 20th century, you had your hot air balloons, blimps and airships adorning the skies. Some were driven by wood fires, others steam engines, and even small eight and a half horsepower electric motors were used. They didn't go very fast, but then again, what the hell's your hurry? Then you had your hydrogen-filled balloons. <laughs> oh, the humanity! No! <laughs> oh, hang on. Mm. It was Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers who are generally credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful airplane. It was December 17, 1903, at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, when the Wright Brothers' flyer became the first heavier-than-air machine to achieve sustained flight with a pilot aboard. Although the flights were short and the speed of their flyer was only about 11 clicks, or, or less than 7 miles per hour, with an altitude so low you could, you could almost jump up and touch the plane, Modern aviation was born. And like the great flying machines, the aviation cocktail also took flight in around 1911. It was barman Hugo Enslin working at the Hotel Wallach in New York that created this enchanting cocktail from the botanicals of gin, some sourness from fresh lemons tempered by sweet maraschino liqueur, and the all-important floral notes from creme de violet. Hugo Enslin included the aviation cocktail in his 1916 book, Recipes for Mixed Drinks. It was one of the last cocktail books ever published before Prohibition. By 1930, the aviation cocktail appeared in Harry Craddock's Savoy Cocktail Book. But for some reason, the recipe didn't include creme de violet. By omitting the floral flavor and beautiful hue of creme de violet, you basically end up with a sour. 
It was probably a copying error on Craddock's part, or, or maybe it was due to the scarcity of creme de violet in Europe and America. But this typo ended up standardizing the aviation cocktail for decades to come. What a shame. So let's right this wrong and make this pre-prohibition cocktail the right way. The aviation cocktail. <laughs> let's do it. Okay, we're gonna make an aviation cocktail. Uh, I've got my little coupe glass here filled with ice and water, and we're just gonna chill her down, set it off to the side. And look what I've got here, some aviation gin. Distilled by House Spirits in Portland, Oregon, aviation is a pioneer of small batch American style gin, clear with thick, slow moving tears that coat the glass. On the nose, spiciness is in the foreground layered with citrus zest, juniper, cardamom, and lavender. Sweet and spicy notes emerging mid-palate. The finish is long, sweet, and spicy. It's perfect in its classic namesake cocktail. Two ounces. Perfect. Luxardo maraschino cherry liqueur. We want four bar spoons, or that's about a half an ounce. There we go. Then we've got our wonderful creme de violet. Creme de violet. Clear with a purple color, floral aroma and flavors dominate. Violets, rose, lavender, and potpourri. Light bodied with bright acidity that gives balance to the sweetness, creating a soft mouth feel. This ever elusive liqueur and its floral flavors linger on with a finish that is long and pleasant. A lot easier to find today than it was for many years. We want two. Oh, look at that color. Bar spoons. What a wonderful hue. Lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. We want a half a lemon. And that should yield you about half ounce, three quarter ounce. Oh yeah, look at that, sweet. Okay, filler full of ice, and let's get to shaking. And you wanna shake for a good 20 seconds. Ooh. Where's my glasses? There we go. Yeah. Shaking. <laughs> okay. I can't see. There we go. Get rid of this ice. And all we want to do is double strain it out. Yeah. That gets rid of any of the uh, lemon pulp and maybe some of the, the little pieces of ice that are going on. Beautiful, look at that. Look at how wonderful that is. And garnish it with a little piece of lemon and a real cherry, a Luxardo cherry, yeah. How lovely is that? Let's check it out. Mm. That is lovely. It's fresh, it's clean. It kind of slaps you in the face too at the same time. And you want to aim for that purplish hue, depending on the brand of creme de violet, the amount of lemon juice you use, but you want to try and get that wonderful purple hue going on, kind of like the, the sky at dawn. And again, you got to be real careful on the amount of creme de violet you use, because if you use too much, it could end up tasting like hand soap. I love it. Mm. Make one. <laughs> you won't be sorry. Yeah.
delightful. You know, wow. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> I'm on Patreon now. Yeah. When I was a teenager, we bought a bottle of mezcal. And this mezcal is kind of cool because today you don't find mezcal with the worm in the bottle. And it had the worm in, and we were all scared to pop it down our throat because it's supposed to give you some kind of weird, uh, wonderful, hallucinogenic kind of thing going on, right? So what we did, we drank the mezcal, and on a later date, we dried out the worm, and we ended up smoking it. <laughs> <laughs> For just a few dollars a month, you get access to things that nobody else sees. You get bloopers, you get uh, podcasts, newsletters, and sneak peeks. You get a whole whack of stuff that you're gonna love. So become one of my booze hounds and help support the show. This stuff gets expensive, and every little bit goes back into the show. Thanks in advance. Oh, I'm flying in, and not because I took the ornithopter in. Um, I, I'm flying because I've had a couple of these now. <laughs> They're so good. Mm, mm. Hit the subscribe button. Be an aviator. Get off your butt and do it. <laughs> Check out the other episodes too, and uh, make yourself an aviation cocktail because they taste good.